so kind of listening in and so long the twenty, so kind of over it's like we have a few, you know, cloudy guys out here. Hopefully we won't start raining. Uh, all right, so I'm going to be talking about AOS. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the project. I'm just going to talk about the kind of components at a high level overview, uh, talking about um, you know maybe some of the new tools that we have that we're shipping with the, the project. Uh, almost everything here uh, that I'm talking about is in Fedora, so you should install it, um, play around with it, and then if we have some time, I'm going to talk, I'm going to show you some of these commands and whatnot, um, and uh, you know talk about some you know some of the things that's coming. Up. So what is it? For those who don't know, it's a set of tools, uh, free and open source tools geared toward the infrastructure of the cloud uh, deployments. Uh, it's not a cloud provider. It's a set of tools to manage uh, clouds. Um, and again, it's infrastructure as a service. Um, this is the level of cloud computing where uh, you're giving access to resources such as uh, virtual machines, such as you know network and disk and whatnot, uh, resources in some data center, some managed data center. And then uh, you know you're kind of given room access to that. So uh, the, the, the AOS tool set is used to manage those deployments um, in an open manner, so that you can uh, control uh, those across clouds um, consistently. So uh, without further ado, AOS consists of Delta Cloud, which is the core API. It is the uh, core mechanism which you will interface with uh, AOS program management. Uh, Delta Cloud is uh, a RESTful web service uh, because a lot of cloud providers, um, you know, provide, almost all cloud providers provide their services as a web service and a web service interface. Um, so similar to if anyone's familiar with Libvirt, the uh, virtualization API, it kind of provides a central Libvirt daemon that's uh, kind of one management interface which you can uh, manage these remote um, entities, uh, the, these uh, VMs running on hypervisors. Delta Cloud provides a server that is kind of um, central and um, able to manage with those remote cloud providers. Image Factory is the uh, plot, the image creation uh, tool, the tool which you use to uh, create images to be deployed across cloud providers. Images are defined. You you specify a template, you know, containing the repositories, containing the uh, the the software packages, the uh, files that you want present on the image, and then you build an image, and then you would deploy that image, um, you know, via the cloud. So you know, AOS is kind of just an umbrella, kind of a, uh, a, a, um, a kind of a big project consisting of a lot of these smaller components, kind of the Unix uh, ph uh, philosophy, where you know Delta Cloud does the cloud management and that's it uh, really well. Image Factory does the uh, image building and deployments. Um, IWHD is a generic key value store. You, you if uh, you're familiar with the, the field of cloud computing at all, you know that you can hook up uh, generic key uh, storage options to uh, various cloud providers. This is one uh, very lightweight one that we have uh, written in uh, C that um, it can be attached to uh, any cloud provider and um, that uh, they can be used to host data. We use it, for example, to host our images that uh, we build with Image Factory so that we can uh, deploy them to any cloud provider from there. You can use the same images. Yeah. Why would, what's the rationale? Because there, there's numerous key value stores, so what was the motivation? Sure, um, something that we own, something that's lightweight and um, suits our needs. Um, IWHD has both a RESTful and a QMAP based interface to it. Um, and uh, you know, it also provides you know, uh, two level command line tools. So it can plug into uh, a lot of different places that uh, we want it to. So is it sort of analogous to Delta Cloud in a way that it's like it's like an abstraction layer for and then on the back end it's using a cloud provider for the actual storage? Um no, it actually Where does is it actual doing storage? It actually does the storage. Okay. Um, I believe that it can be interfaced with uh, different uh, storage providers on the cloud in, in uh, such a manner. Um, I don't know the specifics, um, but uh, I know that it, it's primarily its purpose is to serve as a storage mechanism. So that's kind of interacting with these components. And again, these components can work with the, uh, the other uh, back end cloud providers. Um, Oz is a, when we first started generating our cloud images, um, we, they were kind of heavier and they were kind of uh, more, um, they, they, they were harder to move around to different clouds 
and uh, they're more bulky. So Oz is something that we came up with um, that it's, uh, it, it uses the notion of JEOS, just enough operating system, to allow us to build images which are very lightweight, which are very portable, which are able to be moved between cloud providers very easily. Um, and then we can uh, use Oz to use the native system tooling to uh, bootstrap uh, different environments on those images. So you, you know, use Image Factory will um, build and spin up an image that's very lightweight, um, very, has very little requirements, very little dependencies, and then we use Oz that will use, um, you know, an RPM um, and Yama on, on RPM-based systems, um, you know, uh, perhaps Kickstart as well, um, depending on the circumstances and what's available, and um, on uh, Debian and, App, and systems like that, AppGet and uh, so on and so forth, on Windows, the native Windows tool, and et cetera, et cetera. So, it, it, it allows us to uh, ship uh, to build uh, images a lot lighter than that. So, Mark is giving uh, a presentation on Box Grinder, I think, at the same time slot as this. Um, how does this compare and contrast with Box Grinder? Because they kind of both solve the same purpose, right? Sure. Um, you know, there there are um, similarities, but, you know, uh, Box Grinder, well, it is, it's, um, I'm not terribly I'm not familiar with Box Grinder, to tell you the truth. Um, I don't believe they take this approach, though, do they? I mean, do they? I, I My understanding is that they're more like uh, offline uh, image creation, um, okay. and this is more, you know, boot a VM and install it. So and I exactly, guess there's pros and cons to that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think I think they're different uh, ways to approach the problem and the, to tackle the issue. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that this uh, allows us to uh, generate kind of more portable images. Um, and uh, to be able to move, uh, it was have images that are able to be able to move between cloud providers, and um, you know go from there. So you know going along with that, um, there's a snap the snap project which was just recently introduced. Um, it's a system snapshotter which uses uh, similar to Oz the native tooling um, that is uh, present on the system itself to take a snapshot of that, of that uh, system. So now you can take snapshots of systems running on the cloud and be able to move those snapshots um, in between uh, different cloud providers. And uh, again, in the, in the spirit of uh, kind of more interoperability and, um, and less, um, less vendor lock-in when you're adapting a cloud provider, you can use Snap. And then there's Conductor, which kind of orchestrates a lot of these components. Um, which uh, brings uh, things together in a uh, web front. So, to use it, um, oh, and before we go on, um, there's also a project which I'm introducing at this FUDCon um, that a couple of us have been working on, uh, MyCloud, which is I've got high level LC API orchestrating uh, some of these components similar to, um, you know, uh, Conductor. Um, in the sense that it can be used to uh, manage Image Factory and Delta Cloud and IWHD, and uh, the, it provides a uh, rich C API, which you can use to control different cloud providers um, at that level, and then additional tooling can be built on top of that. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. So, uh, well, actually, uh, I'm just going to continue on. Um, the idea behind uh, this is to provide a generic interface which should manage and monitor uh, infrastructure as a service cloud computing, uh, provide an open source solution to uh, control cloud providers, and provide simple tooling to build images, deploy images, and view modified resources. So, so, we didn't cover all that very much. so uh, to use uh, Conductor, it's really simple. In Fedora, Yum install AOS All, um, which contains the entire ship. Sorry. Go ahead. I was just like, yes. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, install AOS all and then run the configuration tool. This will take care of uh, configuring all the different components and then all you have to do is navigate to the conductor and use the web interface. From there, uh, you can uh, define different things like deployments and um, define uh, your different cloud providers and whatnot using the uh, supply interface. So in terms of cloud providers, like obviously if you have an Amazon account, you can connect to that and you yes. set rack space and so forth. Uh, what about just like a native Fedora cloud? Is there work on that in progress? Um, absolutely. Uh, I mean, we have support for both Rev um, and um, OpenStack, I believe. So Rev, you mean over it then? For, we yes. can talk about the open, open source side of yes, it. Yes, yes. Uh, Delta Cloud supports a lot of different cloud providers. If, if OpenStack hasn't done this in progress, I know that. Um, but they're all documented on the Delta Cloud website. 
There was, there was a project, um, actually it was a Fedora 16 feature page for Condor Cloud, which is basically a really lightweight, set up a couple Fedora boxes and manage it as a cloud. Did that, yeah. did that ever get finished? Um, yeah, yeah, we actually yeah, we wrote that. So, cool. um, yeah, we helped write it. Uh, so you use the, the Condor um, grid um, um, management framework as a cloud provider. Um, so jobs are kind of more analogous to, um, to clouds and and, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's uh, stuff worth something to check it out. And uh, yeah, it's probably easy to update it. But yeah, there's definitely a lot more support here. But um, yeah, here is you know the, the uh, different frameworks that Delta Bots use. Sorry. Going back to the presentation. So this is how you use uh, the conductor. Uh, how you use MyCloud. Uh, you, you install MyCloud. This um, this is one of the few components that I'm going to talk about that is available on uh, Fedora yet. Um, to uh, use it, you actually have to use my uh, yum repo. Uh, either go into yum.morse.org or uh, morse.fedorapeople.org. Um, both both repos contain the same bits. And they both have the uh, repo navigator or the repo configuration file. So um, once you set those up, um, you can yum install uh, my cloud. Pulls in a couple extra components. Then you set up your compilers in mycloud.yaml, and then you use mycloud to uh, control those and to uh, launch those the uh, providers. The nice thing about this is that it's not, um, um, it doesn't require root access so that you can run mycloud. ALS configure, configures up, the, configures the ALS suite of utilities, um, but mycloud uh, is just kind of all um, centralized. So uh, in mycloud, it's just a simple way to pull in and start various components and provide a C-level interface to do it. Um, it's just to start a project. I'm looking uh, to get uh, various people to pitch in and throw in ideas. Um, you know, if you know, going forward, cloud computing is a very new field. Um, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of adopting, uh, you know, different cloud providers and whatnot. So, you know, as, as these things start to get integrated more and with the cloud sig and the Fedora desktop a little more, definitely looking towards, you know, people to, you know, kind of voice what they're looking for. You know, in, in terms of you know, uh, binding tool, different tooling with the de desktop at different levels and uh, being able to facilitate that is kind of the, you know, one of the goals of the project to be able to uh, address the needs of lots of different people. So, um, you would edit uh, MyCloud by this config file and then you, this is some of the API um, that you would interface with as you initialize the system. You declare a provider, declare a deployable, you start up the, uh, specify the connection to that you just need to connect to the actual provider, in this case we're connecting to the remote provider. Um, you, define, you, de you define it deployable in the file, that image factory can be read in, um, it'll, it'll define that from the file, um, and then you deploy that to the cloud. So very simple, straightforward, no, no fuss interface, um, you just connect to the provider. Uh, as you can see, you know, from there we can write wrappers for different languages, we can build up, um, write different tooling in uh, uh, other different uh, frameworks, so that you can interface the desktop, um, things like um, uh, you know various QMF, RESTful interfaces, with Notify, Dbus, um, you know, with with my cloud. So um, it's a simple way to deploy to the various cloud providers, and that's about it for AOS. Um, I have a follow-up presentation we also about uh, Snap particularly. Um, that's uh, my sub project. Or uh, before we get into that, are there any questions? Or anything from there? Any any thoughts as towards you know people's uh, different um, experiences with uh, different cloud providers and some and things that they're looking for um, when they're going to the cloud or um, you know there's. Uh, is that a question? Can, yeah. Is AOS able to deploy to do two different uh, providers at the same time? Yes. Okay. So the same image can be uh, that's that's kind of the image factory takes care of that abstraction. Um, I'll bring up a uh, template. I've heard some things about Delta Cloud that you configured it for a single provider, and you had to kind of run different instances for each provider. But um, yeah, this would be the case. There was okay. an older version, okay. um, but um, the uh, Delta Cloud provides a RESTful interface. So um, in the RESTful, in the, the web service attacker, so you can just specify the uh, interface you're going for. Okay. So, that seemed like a big limitation. Yeah. So I'm glad that that's. Uh, 
because I mean, originally the idea was like one um, one uh, Delta Cloud driver per or one provider per uh, instance of so Delta Cloud per provider. But, uh, yeah, that, yeah. My understanding of Delta Cloud is that the the intent of it is that um, cloud providers will run the Delta Cloud daemon as part of their infrastructure. So, from that perspective, it doesn't make sense for Amazon to have you know the interface for controlling a rack space right. environment. Uh, but since we don't obviously have Delta Cloud deployed inside of Amazon and these other providers, uh, you're likely going to run your own Delta Cloud daemon, and in which case, what you're talking about makes much more sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Delta Cloud is like the yeah, standalone web server so that you can uh, kind of dispatch to um, the cloud providers. And this is an example of the template description file. Here's where you would specify the, uh, you know, the type of system that you're trying to build, the, um, the repositories, uh, the, you know, the package section of files that, you know, then this, this could be deployed to any provider. Um, you know, the, these are all uh, services that um, can be started at Fedora, like I said. started Um, we're connecting to the Delta Cloud server to uh, list images. Um, That's a local Delta Cloud server you're running on your laptop. Yes, I started the server with sudo uh, Delta Cloud service. Um, um, and then I'm connecting to the uh, actual service uh, by the Delta Cloud client.
web interface will be the Dove Cloud. If the you know Dove Cloud is primarily a West, uh, RESTful API, um, or RESTful. Um, so this web interface is kind of a kind of informational read only um, interface, not really meant to uh, do any kind of doing. So this, was it meant to look? Like a web app or like a phone app website? Uh, quite possibly. I know uh, we do have it. It is, it is, uh, it does work on mobile devices. So we do have kind of intent towards that. And it's kind of, uh, that's the simplest interface, right? But, all right. I mean, that's, that's pretty much how you run Delta Cloud. I mean, it's, for some reason, the, uh, the command isn't planning to work with it, just where the you know, uh, reputations go. Um, so, you know, it, it, it encompasses a few different sub-projects. Uh, you can use those uh, projects to deploy to um, any cloud provider as is. Um, you know, from Fedora, you can start interfacing various tools with uh, the, uh, the Delta Cloud Server, the uh, Image Factory tooling. You can use the uh, Conductor Web Interface to um, start messing around and start uh, you know, kind of deploying things a little bit higher. Um, if you want to start messing around with my cloud, uh, you can just uh, play or leave, install that for my YUM repo, um, and the the, uh, the API and the um, documentation is hosted on GitHub. And uh, you can just easily check it out. And um, and uh, you know, mess around with the source. And like I said, if anyone has any any ideas as far as what they're looking for with this, like a C API, a uh, a API at the C level to uh, control different cloud providers, um, you know, I'd love to hear your your feedbacks and your thoughts so that we can, uh, you know, to develop something really solid and to um, to be able to use it in, in different uh, contexts from Fedora and to bind to the underlying systems. So. Um, to talk about uh, the SNAP subproject a little bit and how you can use this to dip, to uh, migrate across cloud providers. So let's say you have an instance um, deployed to EC2 or um, you know some VMware instance or some. And when I say cloud providers, I mean any. It doesn't just have to be on the cloud per se. It can be virtualization hypervisors. It can be a, a local uh, machine hardware, uh, physical or uh, virtual that uh, you want to uh, take a quick snapshot of and uh, migrate that. Um, Snap can be used for that. Uh, so that, like I said, if you have an instance on uh, EC2, you want to move it to Rev or uh, over, for example, uh, you can take a, a quick snapshot. Um, snap the snapshot. Uh, this is a tool for restoring. And this is the, that's a, a picture from the GUI interface. Um, and it's, that is but um, yeah, the uh, it's a, a tool to take and restore snapshots in a simple, high-level manner. Um, you know, unlike the virtualization, uh, there there are some emerging uh, projects, B two B, and other tools to take uh, uh, migrations of uh, virtualization. Um, uh, disk images and you know with guest, the guest FS to open the crack open disk images. You know on, on cloud providers you can't do that. Obviously EC2 isn't going to uh, uh, provide the facility the, the facilities to uh, move um, you know images from their provider. Um, so you know there's vendor lock in there. And um, so you know to, in order to get around that we take a snapshot of the system in a, a kind of abstract a manner, a high level manner um, that you know we can record the state of the system without having to um, have to get into the uh, too, too much details of the uh, underlying storage mechanism. So it uses native operating system. Uh, it describes the uh, system in this kind of abstract manner. It uses the native. It dispatches the uh, build the backup and the snapshot request to the underlying system. Um, that it uses the native tooling of that system to so it takes care. It takes care of backing up uh, repositories, packages, and files. Um, so that uh, you know, in services using the native tooling, using the the Postgres tooling, using the uh, you know the uh, web, the web server and various um, data, the various other server tooling to uh, be able to really kind of tightly couple the uh, snapshots to what's actually on the system. Um, and then right now there's support for RPM and Yum based distros with uh, Debian uh, and as well as Debian AppGet distros as well as Windows. Um, and Windows actually support provides um, some um, some decent mechanisms. Um, which to uh, which to be able to automatically store packages. Uh, as, when I say packages, I, I, say so, I mean software in the Windows world. 
um, and to you know uh, be able to see what's installed and, and to uh, to back that up. So um, you know this is provides an abstract interface to take snapshot on any service on any of these uh, all underlying systems. So um, a simple way to take and restore snapshots. They're efficient and they only contain data that uh, can't automatically be replicated. The files, for example, are going to be the files that are modified outside of the package management system. So you're not getting the cruft that comes with the operating system. You're just getting the the, the extra bits that you care about that um, and the metadata to, to uh, represent to, to produce the environment in which those uh, the, the, those bits make sense. In. Um, and you know they, they're 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 represented abstractly, but they're tightly coupled to the, uh, the underlying system, um, and allowing you to migrate snapshots into uh, you know each backend mechanism has complete access to the configuration, has complete access to um, the metadata subsystems, so that they can write and um, uh, re uh, read the data that they need to uh, the, 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 they need to be able to uh, determine what's running to be able to tightly couple. Um, the uh, the, uh, the backup and snapshot operations to those. So, how do you use it? Um, it's actually pretty simple. Um, I, again, it's on Fedora. You install Snap. You install Snap GTK. Use Snap Tool. Um, it requires all the privileges because it's you know accessing restricted uh, subsystems. Um, then you back up the uh, the system, um, including you know what you want to back it up. Um, and then you restore it. It's very simple to use. Um, it's very uh, intuitive interface. A single config file. Um, used to uh, modify the, uh, the uh, various parameters on the system. Um, here you see it's just pretty simple for the files you want to modify, exclude services, um, various service parameters. Uh, again, the, whatever is, is required, the, uh, the snapshot, uh, the, the snap system can uh, back into the polos. And then the graphical snap interface, which is uh, a little bit easier to use. Provides uh, support for encryption. You can use things like cron to schedule uh, regular snapshots. Um, and then to extend, you can easily drop new backends in. Um, probably going to change the directory, which you can drop those into, make it a little more fun there. Um, they'll be automatically picked up. They implement the uh, SNAP interface to whatever uh, to, uh, that to whatever underlying subsystem. It's really easy to extend and use. Um, you know, I wrote a couple for uh, Photocon to um, uh, to do a hack test yesterday that uh, a few people attended. Here's one for uh, Bind. Bind is actually really simple just because it stores the configuration in flat files. Um, but you know you can easily determine what uh, backend uh, operating system you're running. Um, in this case, Windows doesn't apply, and Bind doesn't ship there. Um, or we don't, we just don't care about it. Um, then you know we can easily the, the snap interface allows uh, you need to specify if the service is available, install if it's not available. Um, you know actually run the backup operation back into the files, making a record, storing some mess, some metadata which I can uh, uh, further then restore and then restore it from there. So you know we have um, a, tons of adapters written for um, you know several different servers, a lot of the big services. Um, you know these things. Uh, you know, looking to kind of form a kind of more of a community and a couple as as people have different needs to migrate and move applications across different cloud providers and different to and from the cloud and and whatnot. You know, I uh, can see that these uh, will start forming um, more of a community, more people will start to adopt some of these things for their own needs. So, um, as you see, I can add just Apache Cupid, backup the queues, um, get.